Welcome to Thursday Morning Prayer. My name is Andrew Eaton here at St Luke's Wall's End, which stands on a Wabakul land. And with our community and the cathedral community, pay respects to elders past, present and emerging, and we commit ourselves to the journey towards reconciliation. Today our psalm is Psalm 78, verses 16 to 38. And we begin our service on page 407 of the prayer book. This is the message we have heard from Christ, that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength. Herald of good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 78 verses 16 to 38, which can be found beginning on page 302 of the prayer book. But for all this, they sinned yet more against him and rebelled against the Most High in the desert. They willfully put God to the test and demanded food for their appetite. They spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He indeed struck the rock so that the waters gushed and the streams overflowed. But can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard it, he was angry, and a fire was kindled against Jacob. His wrath blazed against Israel. For they put no trust in God, nor would they believe his power to save. Then he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. So they ate the bread of angels, and he sent them food in abundance. He stirred up the southeast wind in the heavens and guided it by his power. He rained down meat upon them thick as dust and winged birds like the sands of the sea. He made them fall into the midst of their camp and all about their tents. So they ate and were well filled, for he had given them what they desired. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God blazed up against them, and he slew their strongest men, and laid low the youth of Israel. But for all this they sinned yet more, and put no faith in his wonders. So he ended their days like a breath, and their years with sudden terror. When he struck them down, they sought him. They turned and sought eagerly for God. They remembered that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But they lied to him with their mouths and dissembled with their tongues, for their hearts were not fixed upon him, nor were they true to his covenant. Yet he, being merciful, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Many times he turned his anger aside and would not wholly arouse his fury. He remembered that they were but flesh, like a wind that passes and does not return. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own Son, in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 
A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 9, beginning at the 18th verse. The Jews did not believe that the man had been blind since birth and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, for they had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God, the protector of all that trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We give thanks for and pray for the First Peoples of the Diocese, especially the Awabakal, Birapai, Dakinjung, Gibagal, Kamilaroi, Waramai, and Wanaru peoples. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have called us to be your people. Have mercy on us and hear us as we say, Lord, come to our aid. Lord, come to our aid. Give us peace in our days, Lord, the peace which comes only from you. Peace throughout the world, especially in the Holy Land, Ukraine, and other theatres of war at this time. Lord, come to our aid. Let your pastors declare the unsearchable riches of Christ and pierce each person's heart with the mystery of your love. We pray especially for Peter, our bishop, with Nikki, Sonia and Charlie, our assistant bishops. We pray for Archdeacon Arthur Copeman and Annabelle, Archdeacon Rod Bauer and Kerry, and Canon Diane Langham and Chris. Lord, come to our aid. Keep us from losing heart over all who have suffered for us and reward their faithful love. In the wider church, we pray for the Catholic Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle, the Australian Defence Force Chaplaincy, and in our own diocese for Lakes Grammar, the parishes of Katara South, Lambton, and Merriweather. Lord, come to our aid. Show us how to walk this day in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. We pray for local federal members of parliament. Pray for all who seek to serve our community in many and varied ways, especially in policy making. Lord, come to our aid. Do good, Lord, to those who have been good to us and help us honour their trust. We pray especially for those known to us in need of any kind. Lord, come to our aid. Have mercy on our friends who have died. May they and all the faithful departed rest in peace. Lord, come to our aid. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power. Protect us from sin. Guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen.